Hello there, this is DBT and this is Art of Rooms. And alright, let's continue playing some more Asphalt 8 and today I'll be doing a multiplayer protest of this beauty that you see on the screen right now and of course that is the Pagani Huayra R. Oh, what a beauty of a car it is, but the real question is it good in multiplayer? We're gonna be trying to find that out today, especially since this is the current, or rather the new car hunt that just began today. So let's try to figure it out. But before we jump into any of that, if you like my content, please hit the like button in this video because it helps with the discoverability and all of that. Subscribe, because why not? It's free. And if you would like to support me, Please check the memberships. Information is by, by that join button. But all right, so what is the deal with this car? First of all, this is a Class S car of a maximum rank of 1861. So it's, in theory, amongst the best cars in the game. Not a straight up king, not top other maximum level, but it's definitely on the better side. But the real question is, is it good? Well, like I mentioned, there's a car hunt that just began for this thing, where if you go premium, you will be able to get the car in tier one, premium costing about $20, Jesus Christ. Um, $20 for this car, but okay. Then in the free lane in tier 19, you could, if you're lucky, you could be able to unlock the DSE 10s for like the 11th time in a row. And in tier 25 on the premium lane, uh, you get the discount coupon for upgrading the Huayra R, which at the point that you're already here, you probably have, have the car at Pro, so that's kind of useless. But all right, so no difference in how the car hunt works, right? There has been no change other than, you know, being a different car. Still, the quote-unquote free car is uh, as hard as to get as always, which is not even a great car, so eh, nothing gained, nothing lost. But all right, I'm going to be driving this car in multiplayer in Classic Series because, of course, that is where you find the most competitive individuals. So let me activate some boosters. And with that, I get to show you the stats of the car with tuning kit. But as usual, as I always say, every single time this information is not particularly useful because this acceleration is not real for most of the cars. But all right, let's get to it. And to start, we get into a long track with 10 people in the race. This is going to get interesting. By the way, I didn't even mention how cool my, my outfit with the DVT hoodie looks along with this car and the black and yellow livery well as a livery it's the only color option that it has which is a bit of a sad situation because this car in different color looks amazing irl this car is in a bunch of colors and it looks super dope and in asphalt 9 you can change the color of the thing um and it also looks super dope so i wish we had some color options over here but it is what it is it's one of those cars that sadly they were like no it only has one single color slash livery and that's all that there is enjoy so every time that you encounter a car uh, this car in multiplayer or anywhere in this game is gonna look the same. So yeah. Oh no, wait a second. There is a livery I think. There's one livery that you could have bought for money or earned some somehow. It adds some gold details, I think. I'm not 100% sure. So I think there is that. I, I, you know what? I should probably check if it's on sale to at least show it. To you. I don't know. We'll, we'll have a look at that. Some people just crashed in the divider of the game, so that's good because now I'm back to second place. Again, very busy race, but. Long track. Oh, what happened with that? Oh, it's lagging. He's lagging. All right. Before someone says, oh, see, he was cheating, teleporting. That's lag, people. Um, but anyway. Yeah, at least second place for a first race. That's not too bad. Is this car amazing? Maybe. All right. I'm, I'm going to be straight with you. Wait a second. Wait a second. This is going to be a first place of us. I mean, GG, everybody. GG. <laughs> All right. Uh, defeated Ajesco. Absolute 300 plus. Absolute. All right. Um, yeah, this, do you know what this is going to be the title of the video? The absolute destroyer to bait people and get them angry. Like, how dare you say that this car can be the absolute? I mean, it can sometimes. I don't know. I'm deciding legit if I should click bait people or not with the title of this video. Because, <laughs> all right, being straight, this car isn't necessarily amazing. Um, it has some issues. I'll talk about it later. But I'm half tempted to, to bait people into, oh, look at that, this is an absolute destroyer so that people get angry and instantly come into the video and come like, oh my god, you know, make a big deal. Not understanding that it was more of a joke. But the reason I'm thinking of not doing it is because at the end of the day, this is a bit of a car, quote unquote, review. So I don't want people to actually believe, not watch the video and believe that maybe I was telling the truth with that title or whatever and be like, oh, I bought it, BBT, but you lied, this thing kind of sucks. So, I don't know, I am a, a bit worried that it may be kind of like that, so, uh, I don't know. Man, the handling of this thing, by the way, it's pretty good. In fact, this car is overall good-ish. It does have one... Whoa! F***! 
two massive issues. <laughs> I was gonna say it has one massive issue, but I was saying that the car decided to do a random jump. So does this have uh, physics issues? I have no idea. I haven't driven enough with it. I've driven it quite a bit. I love this song, by the way. Sorry, sorry. Every time that it plays, I go into that mode. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Does it have physics issues? I don't know. I've driven it a bit, but not enough to be able to tell you. Oh, yeah, consistently I get weird jumps. So that was absolutely annoying because I was going for another first place. You saw it. I was going for first place and my car just jumped into nothingness. So thank you. I appreciate that game. I appreciate that you car beautiful thing. Well, if we wanted to test the natural duration of the car, this is going to be the track because it's Tokyo Reverse. Let's go. Uh, but yeah, other than the possible, maybe, physics issue to be confirmed yet, the problem with this car is its drift. It doesn't have good drift. And, <coughs> excuse me, being a car for the bracket of 1860, specifically of the rank of 1861, like I've said a bunch of times, but it's worth repeating, repeating from time to time, is that the average rank of a Class S car should be 1860. 1861 being the above average, 1862 being the really good class S cars, and 1864 shouldn't even count because that is outside of the bracket, and I don't know why Game Love decided to add one single card that breaks the rules, but anyway. Um, so yeah, that is basically how any bracket works, right? Uh, for example, the 1770. 1770 is average, 1771 is good, 1772 should be really good, 1769 should be kind of bad, and 1768 should be pretty... Dude, stop pushing me, you mother lover! Anyway, so that is kind of how that's supposed to work, right? So this car being on the 1861 should be on the good side, and I would dare to say that it's a good car overall, just less good than the good cars of this M. I don't know, it's hard to tell. Again, a lot of people, and justifiably so, really instantly think that a car with bad drift is a terrible car. I wouldn't say that this is a terrible car, but you can definitely feel the fact that the weak drift makes this car less um, reliable. It is agile in the sense that, like I said, it has good handling, but with a... What? No, no nitro for me. Okay, neat. Um, with the less than... I'm gonna say less less than average maybe, or is it just less than good? I don't know. But with that, that the level of drift that we will be testing later in this video, um, that is what makes this car a little bit like, I don't know, man. Uh, this this race went kind of bad. Thanks to that, I think it was uh, Faraday that was pushing me. Was? That was pushing me, so. Thank you, Faraday, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's the, the guy that was ahead of me. Okay, whatever, whatever, it's, it, it's fine. Don't worry about it, I'm fine. So, we have covered handling being good, drift being kind of bad. How about the nitro on this car? Well, from what I've observed, the nitro duration, if you're doing triple tap, is going to hurt badly. This, this thing doesn't seem to have a, a good triple tap at all. But when it comes to perfect nitro, it seems okay. You know, nothing outstanding or anything, but it's not weak nitro either on, on perfect nitro. So, that is something if you want to keep in mind. Uh, so usable, usable. So really, the main weakness of this car, like I said, I would, I would, I would assume, or I would dare to ven, I would venture to say that it's the the drift. Like I said, the handling, it's on the good side. Um, king level handling, probably not, but still really, really good. So yeah, there's that. So so long as you can deal with somewhat bad drift. You can deal with this car, and I say somewhat bad drift, because you know, I keep on using it as my standard of terrible drift, though it's not the worst, but still. In Class S car, the Mercedes AMG GT Black Series, um, that thing, man, the drift on that thing is really bad, compared, even compared to this. So that should give you a bit of an idea of how, how the drift kind of works. In fact, why don't we test it and see how it good or bad actually is in my usual test. But there we go. Defeated by a Bayan and a Bailey Blade. Try to beat a Jesco Absolute. See, I'm telling you, this is the Jesco killer and the and the Shiro 300 plus killer as well. Totally. It's, it has nothing to do with randomness and multiplayer. No, no, no. Oh, and by the way, I was correct. There is indeed a Libre for this thing. Um, this is what it looks like. I mean, it's all right. But spending 200 vouchers on that? I don't think so. You know what time it is. Spiral Drift Test. Let's do this. How good or terrible is this drift? Let's try to find out. Here we go. So, all right, let's try again. Ugh. 
Like I said earlier, the drift isn't absolutely hideous, it's not terrible, but it's not great either. I did have to release at the very end to not hit the inside of the wall, but still, it wasn't amazing by any stretch of the imagination. Let's try again, and yeah, look at that, it's kind of wide. Again, there was a release, and I want to see, does this work for downforce test? Because this thing seems to have no downforce, I crashed on that, and I know that some cars, classes cars, can go down like this at full speed, so is that a good test of downforce? Hey, people that know about this stuff, is that a good test for downforce? Because I would love to bring it into this test as well. As well. All right, and now let's test it in the opposite direction and see. Again, usually in this direction, I, I, I've said a bunch of times that it feels like the drift is it's assisted uh, when it's on this direction, where it's a little tighter than it would normally be, but still, kind of gives you an idea. All right, there was one release. So, I would say, again, usable. Nothing amazing, nothing garbage, just usable. Oh, man. The fact that I had to restart so many times this to find a car that I could outrun, and I could not find a car that I could outrun, makes me think that the acceleration on this thing, it's straight up terrible. But let's see. Yeah, I restarted this a ton of times hoping to get a car that I could outrun without getting in the way. Over there I had to steer a tiny little bit to get out of the way, but yeah, there you go. I just can't. I even found bad class S cars that I still could not out accelerate. It was ridiculous. So let's keep on trying, but yeah, I don't know that the reading on this time to what would be super accurate. Because again, look, gets in the way, you need to steer a little bit away. And only like that, try it. But man, I'm telling you, this this definitely feels like bad acceleration simply because I cannot outrun anything that the AI brings. Nothing. I mean, while I'm waiting here, oh, Jesus. Did you see how cool my car looked with my human livery? It was beautiful. But anyway. Yeah, I'm back to multiplayer over here, Dubai, 11 people, this is gonna get crazy. Um, but yeah, so, given this acceleration, it's a blessing that we have ghosts at the start of the race, because at least I'm not gonna get knocked down right away, and maybe that's what made this car even worse when there was no ghosting at the start. Man, I can tell you how happy I am that Game of finally listened and they added ghosting at the very start of the race, because that really has changed my appreciation for a lot of cars. That still might not be good, kind of like this, or not, may not be great, but at the very least, now they don't get knocked down at the very start, so there is that. And someone told me in a comment uh, in some other video some, some time ago, it's like, yeah, but now thanks to the ghosting, people with insane acceleration, they just zoom past everybody and you can never catch up to them. Yeah, that's kind of true. But at the very least, look, I'd rather be able to have a, a, the start of the race in peace than to get knocked down. What the f***? What was that? All right, can someone rewind and tell me what just happened there? Why did I wreck? All right, that's the second mysterious wreck that I have with this car. Physics issues? Hmm. But yeah, like I was saying, I would still rather have a decent start of the race, even if I'm not going to finish first. But at the very least, I don't get knocked down and my race doesn't get um, destroyed in the very first two seconds or first second of the race. That is why I still appreciate this. And the fact that it allows so many more cars to be competitive. Thanks to that, despite their terrible acceleration. All right, I got defeated by Abayan, Batista, and Jesco. But I did beat all of this other stuff. Wow, not a lot of people bring this thing. I don't want to make... Recently, I made a video on this car, but in Asphalt 9. I don't know if I want to do one in Asphalt 8. I, I mean, I will at some point, but Jesus Christ, I just don't feel like doing it. Yeah, I would dare to say overall that this car, it's, it's strong point is the handling. That's, that's what it is. The rest is either average or kind of bad, like the acceleration. So, again, not necessarily an amazing car. And when you consider uh, some other cars that are also in this exact same rank, not the bracket, but the rank itself of 1860, when you have something like, just thinking from the top of my head, the Cyan, absolutely fantastic car. Yeah, it does also have some not great points, but still fantastic car. Oh, for You have the Centenario, again, great car with physics, physics issues, but still. You have the Lycan Halloween Edition. You have the Bugatti Cento the Ecchi. Oh, Jesus! All right, this race is just all sorts of BS, huh? <laughs> all right, I wanted the 10th place. That's that's what happens. I wanted to have that um, on video. But what are the cars over there in that same bracket? You have the... Well, I honestly haven't driven it at... Oh, God, that was terrible. Um, the Tushek, the Apex, that's also in this bracket. I hear that it's good, though. I cannot say that for sure. Mostly because I have it at stock. I've been planning to upgrade it, and I might use a bunch of direct upgrades to do so. But yeah, that's another card that I hear it's pretty strong in this bracket. Not the, again, not the bracket, the rank specifically. That's what I'm saying. If this card was an 1860, I would, I would say, okay, that makes kind of sense. That is kind of eh. Overall, it can just, it's there, you know? 
But at 1861, there's a lot of things that aren't that same bracket that are really... Oh, the Faraday, same bracket. Not same bracket, same rank. That's what I'm saying, you see? Cyan. Um, yeah. I mean, th this rank alone has some really strong cards. So this, compared to those, hmm. Now, if you're thinking, DBT, could you just be straight and tell me, do you recommend for me to go buy this car for 20 bucks in the racing... No, what is it? In the uh, car hunt? No. There you go. That's as straightforward as I can get. Yeah, I'm sorry. This, with the price and the performance of this car, wait for one of the other cars that I mentioned. A Cento Dieci. Oh, go for it. Yeah, it's a very heavy car, but the acceleration on that thing is pretty dope. Um, the Divo is also a great car in that bracket. Again, Centenario. Oh, for f sakes, man. Uh, the Centenario, the Cyan, the, the Tushek, the Faraday. There's so many other cars that, in general, are going to give you a better performance than this thing. Again, the handling is the strong point, I would say. Other than that, I don't know that it has any other strength. Maybe it's fantastic at recovery or something like that, that I don't know how to measure that. So, hey, if you know something that I don't know about this car, do let me know in the comments. I would love to see what is what makes this car special, if there's anything at all that makes this car special. Because as it stands, I really feel like the performance of this car should be really be more on the 1860 rather than 1861. And if someone tells me, yeah, but this is half a kilometer faster, I'm just going to not take into account because half a kilometer faster in Class S races doesn't matter. Um, in general, I would trade half a kilometer being slower if it had much better acceleration, for example. Things like that, right? So that's why, in that sense, the speed alone... Oh, Jesus Christ, this terrible... What is happening with these last two races? It was just knockdowns. That what it, that's what it was. That's what's been messing me up. That's fine. I'm fine. All right, I got defeated by just about everything. What did I beat? A Jesco, Hurricane Evil Spider, Faraday, and a Reventon. Is this a Faraday killer? No, it's not, but hey, it's, it's fine. Now, if you want to get a heart and a pin, you need to leave me the key phrase, which for today is going to be... A rare racing raptor runs rampantly, reminiscent of regal yet rel relentless and riveting rituals. I'm going to try that again because I fumbled the words a little bit. It is... A rare racing raptor runs rampantly, reminiscing of regal yet relentless and riveting rituals. First person to post against the heart, the pin, you know how this whole thing works. And while we're there in the comments, why don't you let me know... Visually speaking, what do you like more? This, the Pagani Huayra R, or the Pagani Zonda R? Because that is a bit of a thing that I have in my head that I'm like, man, I like them both. But I personally speaking, and don't you better already posted it. Comment, let me know. And then I'm going to give you now my thoughts. I prefer a lot more the Huayra. No, excuse me, the Zonda R. No, the Zonda this, this looks fantastic. Don't get me wrong. It looks fantastic. But I still like more the, the wing style of the Zonda R. In general, I just like the Zonda R more. This is pretty cool. And if I had a taller wing, maybe I would like it even more. But as, it's, as it stands, I would still prefer the other one. And there's already a newer model of this car, the Zonda... Excuse me, Huayra R. What is it called? The Evo or something? It's a little bit longer. It has a tiny bit of aero differences. It looks very similar. So I... I don't, I don't think Game Loop should even bother trying to add that car. Though, if they added it with color options, then maybe that would make me happy. But hey, it's fine. All right. Can we do anything back in Dubai? Isn't this a race that I won? In the no, no, no. Here in Dubai was where I got one of those super weird explosions in a ramp. Yeah, I remember. It was in the opposite direction, but yes. So, yeah, overall, it's still... Oh, for sakes, man. I'm fine. Ah, the knockdowns and the crashes in this is ridiculous. Anyway, it's a fun car. It's all right. Nothing special. Um, you know, just if you already have it and you have it upgraded, then yeah, it's fun to use from time to time and whatnot. But really not something worth paying a bunch of money for. At this point, I'm not going to get angry anymore. The races are completely gone to spit. So it's fine. It's fine. And it sounds like a Lambo. It has that Lambo V12 engine, engine sound, which I would much rather this had the same sound that the Zonda R had, has, because that one sounds fantastic, and at least not the Lambo sound, so, you know. I like the sound, but it's kind of overused. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, you know what to do. Hit the like button, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.